and Richard Southern joins us now. How's it going, Richard? Good, Maliha. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm going to ask you about a new challenge that's sweeping across social media, but it isn't exactly steeped in science. Tell me about it. No, not many of those social media challenges are. This one, Maliha, is called the Broom Challenge. Oh. And yeah, look, they stand up on their own. It's this stemmed from someone on Twitter the other day saying, according to NASA, the Earth is on a perfect tilt right now that brooms will stand up on their own. So people are trying it out. It's happening. They're dancing. They're saying, wow. The only thing is, this has nothing to do with NASA or the Earth's axis. Look at this tweet from an astronomer, Phil Platt. He says, quote, I'm seeing lots of tweets about being able to balance a broom. Sorry, folks, it's an urban myth. If the broom stands up, it stands up. It's got nothing to do with Earth's gravity or balance whatsoever. Now, Richard, I heard about this, and what I thought was interesting is that people actually still have brooms. I have a vacuum. <laughs> what do you use to sweep up A then? Dyson. Oh, very fancy indeed. I, I know, maybe I shouldn't be dropping that name, but it works very well. So I haven't used a broom in like a couple of years, so I just found it interesting to see a broom and uh, how... You know, and the good thing about this is at least people aren't doing anything dangerous, like, you know, licking chili powder or something like that. That's true. We had the dropping the penny on the outlet challenge the other week. This is a little bit safer, but I'm still stuck in the Stone Age with a, uh, a broom at home, Malia. Safer you got to come over with your Dyson one day. I will help you out, Richard. Don't you worry. <laughs> now, next up, Donald Trump is willing to spend big money to put America back on the moon. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the U.S. now, they have this plan to return to the lunar service. And Donald Trump, he's asking NASA for a lot of money to actually make that happen. So uh, they have what's called the Artemis Moon Program in the States. The idea is they want to land a man and a woman on the lunar surface in 2024. So wow. that's what, like four years from now. So to do this, the Trump administration has requested $25 billion for NASA for the next fiscal year. That's a big uptick. $3 billion of that would be used to develop the vehicles necessary to get astronauts to and from the lunar surface. And unlike the Apollo program decades ago, uh, Maliha, the astronauts who flew to the surface of the moon then stayed for only, you know, a day or two or less. Now, this time around, NASA wants to establish a more permanent base there, both on and around the moon. It all costs money. And, of course, the debate is, should you be spending $25 billion on that? Or is it better spent on Earth, on things like health care and education? And that's always the big debate, isn't it? It is, but I feel like it's kind of neat, something to look forward to. It is. And, you know, we really like the part about finally putting a woman on the lunar surface, certainly something well uh, overdue there. Really. Very cool. So I think I'm looking forward to it. Four years to go. Let's see if it happens. We'll put you up there, maybe, Malia. <laughs> I wouldn't want to come back down. <laughs> now, speaking of outer space, there's new evidence tonight that we might not be alone in this universe. My favorite story of the day. It sounds like a, a sci-fi headline, but it's not. An object 500 million light years away is transmitting signals to Earth that hit exactly every 16 days. Mm -hmm. Yes, wow. it's, a, it's what's called a fast radio burst. This is a powerful but short-lasting radio signal. Researchers have detected about 100 of these in the past, but until now, none have shown a regular tempo. This one sends one or two radio bursts every hour for five days exactly. It then goes silent for exactly 12 days, and the cycle then repeats. And the bursts have been traced to a spiral galaxy 500 light years away. Nobody knows what these things are. There's speculation it could be a fast-rotating neutron star. Of course, there's always the possibility, Maliha, it's something else, maybe something intelligent out there in the universe. Do you believe in aliens? I think, you know, when you're looking at the universe the size as it is, I, I, I think so. Um, you know, we're not going to find these guys because this is another galaxy. We can't mm -hmm. even travel to the nearest sun, never mind this. But it's interesting to look at the evidence that might be mounting for something out there. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Richard. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.